Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Wegerbacher Real Estate Talk. Today we are talking about a very important subject. And we have, I have a guest on the panel again and uh, we are talking about the taxes and fees when selling a property in Spain. And we have our expert today. Good morning. Good morning. It is Desiree Calleja Jimenez. Desiree holds a law degree from the University in Madrid. She studied international law and economy at the London City University. She works in Spain in different, has worked in different real estate agency and in law companies since 1999. And she is now the managing director of Visona Lawyers in Torrevieja. Good morning, Desiree. Correct. Good morning. How are you? <laughs> I'm fine, thank you. Good, good. Desiree, when it comes to selling a property, many people are asking, okay, I have my property on the market, or, or actually I want to put my property on the market, um, but before that I want to know what's all the taxes and expenses coming off. Mm -hmm. Because there will be a buyer who will pay the price of the property, but that's not what the, what the owner or the seller actually takes back um, with him home uh, as a banker's draft. So um, let's go through the different taxes and fees. And, mm -hmm. and um, what we've done is we have an example which you will see in the screen, uh, in the screen and we go through the different um, figures so that you get a good idea of, of what you get from the buyer and what you finally take away with you um, as a banker's draft. Um, we, we made up an example and we said, okay, you bought the property when you bought it whenever, years ago, at 100,000 euros. Correct. Mm -hmm. And now we are selling it at 150,000 euros. So we're assuming you make a profit. There is other examples where you don't make a profit, depending when you bought, but in this example, basically, we make a profit of roughly about 50,000 euros, but we will see later on. Um, what's the first tax, basically, or fee, what we should take well, into consideration? Basically, the main figure that all foreigners worry about is the famous 3% retention. First of all, you have to consider if you are a resident or a non-resident in Spain. That retention will be practiced when you are a non-resident in Spain. Then automatically you are retained the 3% of the title deed price on the sale, okay. which means that you are not receiving the whole amount. The buyer retains that amount and is obliged to present that payment with the Model 211 to the tax office. So that's basically, you as a seller, you don't even get the whole, all the money. So this money is basically being retained. That's retained by the buyer. Okay. It's an obligation. Okay. Not only to retain that 3%, but the plus value as well. Okay. Because mm, yeah. due to recent legal modifications, the obligation of presentation of the tax payment for the plus value, which is another local tax mm -hmm. that is involved in the selling, okay. uh, is to be done by the, by the buyer. Okay. So when you are a non-resident, you will be retained to the 3% and the plus value amount. Okay. Which is the plus value amount? It will vary a lot. Okay. It depends on the cadastral value, on the value of the land, on the date when you purchase and on the date when you are selling. Okay. So those aspects have to be, con are to be considered and we cannot talk about a concrete amount mm. like with the 3% because okay. you will know always that the 3% of your title yeah. deed price is what you are going to be retained. Okay, so let, let's go step by step then. So if we have like the selling price is 150,000 euros, mm -hmm. we know 3% of that, the re what we call, very often it's called retention tax, or, or, but it's actually, it's, it's basically retained by the buyer, paid to the inland, Spanish inland revenue, and, and that's it for the time being. But um, actually it's, it's a pre-tax payment, isn't it, for the actual capital gains taxes? Correct. It's a warranty that there is a minimum amount that will be covered for the capital gain tax. But then you have to calculate the real tax that you are obliged to pay, okay. which is calculated on your profit. Right. Okay, so that 3% retention is not the actual tax. Right. We need to calculate your profit. Right. How much is your profit? Mm. It will depend on your acquisition price, adding as well certain legal costs and taxes that you paid then mm. that can be increasing your acquisition price, so reducing your profit, and then your selling price. 
uh, that can be as well reduced mm -hmm. with all their associated expenses to the sale, like the commissions that the real estate agent may uh, charge you, yeah. or even the plus value that okay. can be deducted as well. Okay. So once you have calculated your profit, then this year you may apply a 19%, which is the, the income tax uh, stated uh, for this year, but the following year could be modified. All right. With the general law that every year is approved by the government for the mm. income tax mm. for the whole of the okay. habitants of Spain. So that's very important to take into, into account. When you sell the property, it is very important not to get an opinion of what your neighbor paid or when he sold or, or whatever. It is important to talk to the expert, to your solicitor, legal expert, to find out exactly how much is at the moment um, the capital gains taxes. Correct. Because if you, if you in, in our example, we, you purchase at 100,000 euro, you sell at 150,000 euro, so basically we make a 50,000 euro profit. Mm -hmm. So over that you pay actually at the moment 19% capital gains taxes yes, as a non-resident. Yes, but you have to consider what we've been mentioning. There are certain expenses that could imp increase your acquisition price. In this uh, standard example, with a property that you bought in 100,000 euros, probably right. if you bought it in 1999, by then the VAT would be around 7%. Right. And there would be notary fees, uh, land registry fees, even solicitor's fees. Okay. As far as you hold the proper official invoices, or you, um, you may have done an improvement in the property and you have an official invoice that shows that that refers to that property and that your fiscal expert uh, confirms that that uh, invoice is addable to the acquisition price, yeah. then you are reducing that 50,000 euros mm -hmm. to a, an inferior amount, All right. which will reduce your tax at the end. Then is to be considered as well mm. these uh, expenses associated to the sale that will reduce in, in, in actual fact, which is the final price that you are supposed to obtain. In this example, uh, your profit would be maybe around 27,950,000. If we consider an standard amount of 10,000 euros as real estate commission services uh, fee, and for instance, an, as an example as well, a 3,000 euros amount in plus value tax. Okay. okay. And then we've con considered as well uh, um, a global acquisition price of 109 uh, with 50 euros. Mm -hmm as acquisition price because we've added the VAT, the notary, the registry. So if in theory you've got 50,000 euros mm. to the effect of the calculation of taxes, you can put that theoretical profit in a reduced amount. Okay. okay. So as you can see, it is a very complex um, system in particular. Um, the 3% the we can easily calculate. But um, the, the plus value tax, as you mentioned before, Desiree, is not um, is not a, a percentage actually it depends and not only uh, it depends on the well it doesn't depend at all on any price so it has nothing to do with the purchasing price nothing to do with the selling price is it is it actually um, read out of tables or you, you, you go it's a complicated amount obviously there are certain legal ranges that are to be respected by the town hall right. and the price of the land is to be considered by them but then the lowest states that you can range the tax from X to X percentage, and then every town hall chooses exactly when they locate themselves. Okay. So it's not to be concreted here, because mm. it will depend a lot mm. on the community where you own the property. Mm. It's not the same Murcia, than Vega Baja, than Alicante, than right. Madrid. Yeah. It varies completely from town hall to town hall, from okay. area to area. Okay. And it's much m m convenient to really refer yeah. to the concrete case. Yeah. <laughs> so you can ask either your real estate expert, you can ask your real estate agent, or you ask um, your solicitor, or you actually go to the town hall yourself. But you need certain documents to find out how much the plus value tax actually is. But plus value tax is not only when you sell; it's also when you when you inherit and or when when, Correct. when okay. <laughs> but um, what? What other taxes and fees come on top of that? What do we have to consider? Then you have to consider, for instance, something that is to be commonly mm, taken in a mistake way, which is the uh, local rates will correspond to the seller. Okay. Because if you become, uh, if the property is yours on the 1st of January of that year mm. legally, mm. you are due to pay 
mm, that tax. So that's the council tax, the SUMA, what Correct. many know the as SUMA. SUMA. Commonly know. Okay. Uh, but sometimes there is a specific agreement. In mind that you sell it on the middle of the year, if you make a special negotiation with the buyer, but mm. technically mm -hmm. will correspond to the seller. Okay. But mm. actually, uh, yes. So the one who is owner at the 1st of January each year mm. still pays the, the SUMA the bill SUMA. basically for that, for that year. So the common thing as well for an non-present is that you are retained that amount okay. by the buyer. Okay. Then there are another obligations that the seller has, like presenting the Certificate of Efficiency of Energetic Issues, yeah. CEE yeah. in Spanish, yeah. and that may cost between 150 to 100 euros depending on the cost of the certificate that the architect needs to prepare for you mm -hmm. and register that at mm -hmm. the uh, official authorities. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the um, habitation license or known as declaración responsable right now because of the changes in law yeah. and the cost will be roughly the same. Okay. So that's an obligation that you have to provide the buyer with those two certificates. Mm -hmm. If you do it in advance, you pay the, the price in advance to the mm -hmm. special uh, technic, technician that you mm, use, mm. but if, for instance, you haven't done it and um, by the day of the title is signing, you cannot provide this, the buyer with those two documents, mm. they may retain those amounts from, mm. the, from the price of the sale right. as well. So we've got the uh, 3%, the plus value tax, the SUMA payment, the local rates, the two certificates we've talked about, then you will have to consider the commissions that the sales agent will charge you. Normally they may take from you as well a caution to cover possible pending expenses of water and electricity because the normal thing is to keep the contracts going on and there is always an invoice that will be due for the previous mm -hmm. days to the sale. Yeah. So even if you are up to date for the water and electric payments, they may be a little amount that should be paid after and corresponds to the seller. So normally there is an agreement in that the buyer will make responsible themselves of um, changing the titularity of mm. the contracts and then paying that extra cost. Okay, so what you basically do is you don't cancel water electricity contract as a seller. Um, you, you just leave it either to the solicitors or you leave it to the real estate agent. They change the name of the Correct. owner of the, of mm -hmm. the contracts, both water electricity. Correct. And they normally also change um, community and council tax. So mm -hmm. it's not basically you, you cancel those contracts, you change it into the new owner's name. Correct. That's the normal uh, okay. way to proceed. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So basically if we take our example, we have the three percent over 150,000 euro that comes up to about 4,500 euros um, we have the we, we took here as a as again it's 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 not a straightforward thing to calculate the plus value tax um, you go to the town hall and to to get it the exact figure and and as you say I mean here in the Vega Baja area um, there's 27 municipal areas so which is basically the plus value tax for for us the same house bought in the same year, sold in the same time, it will be completely different plus value tax, won't it? Right. Mm -hmm. So Torre I think, is rather ex well high because the assessed value, the valor catastral, is, is rather high, whereas other areas, other municipal areas, is, it, it's lower because the, um, the value of the land is considered uh, here in Torre Vieja very high. So yes, that's where it comes down. close to the sea, obviously, it's not going to be the same like buying that in, a, in an area where is not close to the to the beach, etc. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then we have the SUMA, which we assume just about three hundred euros as you pay as a SUMA bill. Again, for this year, you would still be paying it. Um, you have, um, what, let's say, water uh, water bill for one hundred and fifty euros. Um, you and the the electricity certificate another one hundred and fifty euros. The habitation certificate another one hundred and fifty euros. The, um, uh, the fee for the real estate agency, it's obviously negotiate uh, before you actually put the property on the market with your real estate agent. Uh, we assumed here um, around 10,000 euros for a property price of 150,000 euros. And then obviously it depends, uh, Desiree, if somebody has a mortgage or not. Correct. Mm -hmm. If there is a mortgage to be cancelled, obviously the seller has the obligation to cover expenses to cancel this of the Roland registry, right. which means that there is a notarial document to be signed right. and then this notarial document has to be presented to the land registry before the title deed of acquisition of the, of the property, okay. which is the normal way to proceed. 
is that the buyer retains those amounts because and makes it responsible themselves mm. to raise the discancellation of the mm. mortgage. Yeah. Because obviously, is the interested person in having the right duly inscribed okay. with no mortgage at all in of land course. registry. Yeah, you want to have You a cannot leave property. that responsibility to the selling part. Yeah, is to be retained by the buyer and then all the two documents, the acquisition document and the cancellation mortgage document will be registered one after the other. Okay, mm -hmm. so very often you come across a case where um, a seller presents the house, that that's what I want to sell, and you go to the land registry and there's still a mortgage. Correct. So, mm -hmm. and, and what you basically, and you ask the seller, well, what about this mortgage? And he says, well, I actually cancelled it about three, four, or five years ago, so there shouldn't be any mortgage. But you, you come across very often these cases where you find um, the bank has actually cancelled the mortgage, but only within the bank, so economically, mm -hmm. but it has not been the cancellation has not been registered in the land registry. Cool. And because it's a notary act, it has some costs for the notary office and for the land registry. So it's basically like uh, uh, signing a title deeds, isn't it? So Correct. signing any deeds. Mm -hmm. And um, so the seller has to keep in mind that it's not only the outstanding amount of the mortgage, but there's also a well, normally it's a percentage or at least a, a fee. It could be coming up to, what, what are we talking about? 750 euros, maybe 800, something like that. Okay, so no, 750 no. euros you have to keep in mind. That's cancellation fee for the notary and the land registry if you cancel a mortgage. So and the most important thing is to make sure you as a seller that you attend an appointment with your bank and oblige them to attend the notary appointment the day of the purchase to cancel because it's been very common now in, in between certain banks that they do not want to attend the notary okay. and they are obliged to okay. because you are cancelling financially a mortgage and they are obliged to attend an appointment at the notary because the bank has no really interest anymore, they've mm. got their money, they are relaxed mm -hmm. about going to the notary. Okay. When they are signing a mortgage they go quickly and they uh, they worry about the registration, okay. but when it comes to cancelling that, mm. they are more lazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we need to consider that it's important that we talk seriously to our bank mm -hmm. and let them know that it's very important because otherwise your purchase can be even cancelled. Mm. Imagine that there is a purchaser with a solicitor that considers that would not be correct just depositing the check at the notary mm -hmm. and the bank may come a week later. No, okay. because the most important uh, situation is that you've got a document at the notary that says that that mortgage has been, been cancelled. Okay. So um, basically what you, what you need to do before you, um, before you put your property on the market even is to make sure you know how much outstanding mortgage you still have. So mm -hmm. you know, okay, if you still have 50,000 euro to pay off, if you have 20, 10 or whatever is left, and you will have a cancellation fee normally with the bank as well, mm -hmm. uh, which is can be anything between zero and one or, or even 2% of, of the outstanding amount. So you have to keep this into consideration as well. But make sure that you tell the bank once you know you have a buyer, you've agreed with the buyer on, on a completion date, you need to advise your bank that on the 15th of February or whenever you will sign your title leads, you will complete the sale and by that day, Mm -hmm. You need to have the so-called certificado de deudas, isn't it? De deudas. De deudas. <laughs> so you need to make sure the bank provides this to the notary office because the notary office won't cancel the mortgage without this document. Obviously, and then we need to prepare the payments accordingly. Mm. There will have to be a bank draft in the name of the bank, in the right name, because now we've got many banks that they are joining one to each other. Mm. So you may have had the mortgage originally with Banco de Valencia, and now Banco de Valencia doesn't exist anymore. Mm. So you need to really have the proper name of the bank that will have to receive that payment. Okay, okay. Yeah. very important. Okay, so if we have all those figures together, you will see it on the screen. Um, we basically would come back or would come out with at the end of the day a final payment to the seller um, of about 130,200 euros roughly. So this is basically what you take as a banker's draft, what you get at the notary's office as a banker's draft, and that's what you take home with. So you sold your property at 150,000 euros, and you, you get 130,000 euros roughly. It's important to remark in this example that not only the 3% will be 
fully paid to the mm -hmm. tax authorities, but an extra amount. Because in our example, we had roughly a profit of 27,950, and if you apply that 19%, it comes to an amount of 5,000. 310.50 euros, okay. which means that apart from the 3% retention of 4,500, 4, sorry, you will have to pay an extra amount of 810 with 50 cents, mm. and this has to be presented within four months since you signed the selling deed, and with a, a specific model called 210, so your solicitor will have to be responsible of presenting that, or in case a uh, of the seller, of the buyer, not really trusting 100% the solicitor that is representing you, may retain that amount as well. Okay. okay. So, so very often you come across cases where people say, okay, I've paid the 3%, all the 3% is being retained, but it's actually not all. So you have mm -hmm. to really know your, your solicitor or your fiscal representer should calculate exactly the, uh, the outstanding 19% over the profit you make Correct. to see whether the 3% is really coming up to this, uh, uh, this capital gains taxes or, or whether you, you should pay a little bit more. And, um, and you, you do this within the first four months, so you basically pay the, the, the balance um, you pay immediately through your solicitor, don't you? Yes, well, the normal thing from my point of view is to just um, keep that amount apart. Yeah. But in actual uh, fact, the seller has four months since okay. the signing okay. to complement that retention of the service. All right. Okay. So, um, and then you get your money. In this case, you get 130,000 euros roughly, and this is what you take home with. Um, and that's basically, that's basically it, uh, Desiree. <laughs> um, we see it's a lot of numbers. It's a lot of figures, and if you're not used to this, you know, you, you can get very confused right from the beginning because you're not selling a property every day. You might have sold a property back home. You might have sold one down here 10 years ago, five years ago, whenever. But today, the situation is different than five, 10 years ago. Yes. So you, you, need to be, you need to make sure that you're really up to date with all the information. So it's really important to talk to your legal expert, to your, to your um, tax expert, because it's all about taxes and expenses. Um, we, have, we could obviously have another example where you actually don't make a profit, because mm -hmm. people say, well, hang on. Um, we have the example here that you say, okay, you bought it at 100, you sell it at 150, you roughly made 50, well, you know, a little bit less profit. But what about if I, if I bought it at 150 and I sell it at 100, I'm not making any profit. What about the 3% then, Desiree? Then you will have the right to give it back to you, to get it back. Uh, but you need to present a tax form as well, the mm. same model, the 210 claiming that amount from the tax authorities. And the normal thing is that you wait for several months okay. to be refunded that amount. Okay. Now the bank account that the solicitor will indicate in that model will be the bank account of the taxpayer, which means that uh, that 3% refunding is not going to come to the solicitor's account ever. You will have to receive it in your own bank account. Okay. So you need to keep an eye to see when exactly they, they refund it. And it can only be your Spanish bank account? No, there is a, an option as well of uh, introducing a foreigner bank okay. account. Mm -hmm. So basically when you, when, you, when you complete the sale, get, you have your money, you, you, you want to go back home and um, you can close your bank account down here in Spain and you just have to tell the Inland Revenue that you want the 3% or whatever um, is due to be paid back to you. Um, to your bank account back home, is that right? I, I understand that's an option. Even okay. if the most common way is to yeah. have this Spanish bank account is still open because yeah. for many years the only bank account you could indicate it would be a Spanish one. Mm -hmm. Now the tax authorities are evolving in all aspects. Okay. Internet aspects and are more international mm. <laughs> right now. And, and just to do the 3% again, um, although you know and your tax advisor knows and the buyer knows, whoever knows, before you complete the sale that you actually make a loss, mm -hmm. the 3% is still be retained. Always. Because you are a non-resident. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. So because nobody at the notary's office is there to check whether you made profit or not. So the, the notary himself or herself, they are not entitled no, to check no, no, whether no. you make a profit. They just ask, are you resident, Mr. Seller or Mrs. Seller? Not only ask. Okay, let's consider that in Spain we've got an empty space 
about being resident or not being resident. Mm. You know that it is not the same to be resident from the police point of view than being resident from the fiscal point of view. Okay. If you declare that you are a resident, you don't need only to have that green certificate that many people have of that small car that you commonly are given as a European resident in Spain, but you need to have a certificate from the tax office saying that you are a fiscal resident in Spain. Okay. If you don't have that certificate, you will, consider, you will be considered a non-resident. Okay, so that's very important, keep in mind, and that, but this is an issue also for your tax uh, advisor. He will tell you whether you, have, you are officially a tax resident here in Correct. Spain. Mm -hmm. And I guess you know because you, you, you will see whether you've been a tax resident down here in Spain for the last year. But it is, it is important to know that also you make a loss on the property. You, as a non-resident seller, you will be retained 3% and you have the, the right then to claim it back. As Desiree says, it will take several months, probably up to what, six? Could be up to a year. Up to a year until you have the right to claim it back. You will get it back if you've always paid nicely your taxes. That's what I wanted to remark, that sometimes you've presented this model, everything seems to be correct, but the tax office will check if you have presented your four previous years tax declaration. Right. If for any reason there is a mistake, or they consider there is something wrong, you have to keep an eye on that refunding, okay? okay? And okay. being uh, making a following up in the following months. Okay. So I think that's pretty. We pretty much covered everything. Um, but again, as you see, again, um, it's very complex. Um, the the figures and the numbers when you sell a property. So make sure you 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 do not ask all those questions once you have a buyer. Make sure you ask those questions before actually you put your property for sale. And again, you can ask your, uh, your, your fiscal expert on this, your legal representer, or you ask your real estate agent. A proper real estate agent should give you some guidelines at least, so they should know about it. Also, there are no legal experts, so make sure you, you, you get probably two opinions on the same subject. But Thank you very much for coming today, Desiree. It was You're a pleasure welcome. having you here. <laughs> Another expert, a real expert on the, on the fiscal terms and, and legal terms. So um, um, you don't go away because there is more to come. That was our um, real estate expert talk, but we have our lifestyle talk coming up. And um, don't go away, and I'll see you around. Now in the Vega Baja area there's plenty of restaurants to eat out, but why not eating out in an award-winning restaurant? Today on the panel I have the chef and the owner of Las Villas restaurant in Campo Amor. And it's award-winning because just recently they received the famous Golden Fork um, Award for the best restaurant in the Vega Baja area. And it's presented by the association of the restaurants in Torrevieja and the greater Vega Baja area. So good morning and congratulations um, for this reward. Thank you. I will talk a little bit in Spanish as well and translate it afterwards because the, um, we have one English speaker amongst us and one Spanish speaker. So um, the first question goes in Spanish and goes to the, the, the managing director of the restaurant, Mr. Juan José Fernández, buenos días. Buenos días. El, el award, el galardón, ha sido presentado hace muy poco y dinos una, algunas palabras lo, lo orgulloso que os sentís en el restaurante. Bueno, eh, la verdad que es un premio a, a un reconocimiento a la, a la trayectoria de, de los casi 42 años que llevo en, esta, en este oficio. Y es de agradecer ¿no? a la asociación y a todos los hosteleros de Torrevieja y Comarca que se hayan dignado a darme este, este galardón. Lo cual para mí es un orgullo y es una inyección de fuerza para, para seguir con, con el día a día, con ese buen hacer que tenemos en el restaurante de las Villas y continuar pues, no sé, los años que, que se pueda. Mm. He's saying that he is very, obviously very proud of this, but it's, it's not only his, his job uh, to receive that, it is 42 years um, going into this award um, of, of uh, high quality service. And um, it's obviously um, it's an award for the whole team in Las, uh, Las Villas restaurant in Campo Amor. 
And we also have the, the chef here, um, um, Paul Newton, the chef of the restaurant, and uh, he is English speaking, so yep. as the name indicates. So Paul, um, give us an idea, what, what sort of food are you serving in the restaurant? It's basically Spanish Mediterranean style food. Um, anything from tapas, uh, menu of the day, and obviously into the um, a la carte. Uh, obviously, you could come in for a beer, on the menu of the day, or come in for a special occasion. Mm. Um, anything from our birthdays, wedding parties, um, coming into Maine as the communions. Uh, all the food, is, all the food is locally um, so, uh, sourced. Uh, from the Vega Baca, for, uh, for example, mm. uh, the fruits and the vegetables. Uh, our seafood is from the, the Bay of Tarvieja, the Bay of Santa Paula, the uh, Mar Menor. Mm -hmm. Our meats are locally sourced with uh, uh, a butcher we've used for years. Mm. Uh. Great. And um, so in the restaurant, I had the, I had the privilege to be there several times. Um, you have different areas, don't you? So you, you can go there for some tapas, if you say. You have a bar. You have, you have um, um, another separated area where you can for, have... For the menu of the day. Menu of the day. Top areas of the menu of the day. Then we have literally three, three different sections of the main restaurant. Uh, top, middle, and then the private. Also, we have the terrace. And from the terrace, we also have the, the play area for the children. Obviously, um, keep the, the adults nice and calm while the kids go and play. Mm. Uh, they enjoy in the summertime the barbecue. Yeah. Uh, we open the barbecue up for uh, June, July, August, September. Um, basically, yeah, like you said, you can come in just for a, a tapa and a beer. All right. And, and so uh, you can also have bigger parties so that um, I, I know that there's very often you have communions there or you have wedding ceremonies. Most, most weekends uh, coming into the summer is, is the weddings. Uh, to the, the end of, uh, end of April uh, and, and May is obviously the communions. Uh, not just one at a time, it'll be two at a time, three at a time. Uh, they have the space. Mm. Well, we have the space. Mm. Um, obviously, uh, yeah, big, big parties more than welcome. Okay. Juanjo, dinos un poco cómo empezó hace 42 años. Cómo empezó todo, con qué idea y, y para llegar hoy, 42 años después, a, a recibir ese galardón. Bueno, pues empiezo de muy jovencito, como se puede comprobar. Y empiezo en un restaurante cerca de donde tengo el mío, que fue en Cabo Roy, de casi niño. Eh, con 15 años ya empecé. Y bueno, pues empecé como como lo más bajo de, de la tabla, como se suele decir, de aprendiz en un restaurante, que en breve fui ayudante, que en breve fui jefe de rango a cargo, ya tenía a cargo gente a cargo, y luego pues así estuve hasta que llegué en ese, en ese local hasta jefe de personal, jefe de compras, encargado de eventos y catering, y hasta que el 88 fue cuando realmente abrí mi propio negocio, me probé para, para ver si realmente estaba preparado yo para, para esto. Y bueno, a las pruebas me remito. El día 1 de, de julio, hace 30 años, que abrieron las puertas del restaurante de las Villas con, con servicio a nuestros clientes y, y hasta ahora, pues, ahí estamos. Muy bien. So he's saying um, it all started uh, when he was a very young person, a very young man, and he started in a restaurant down in Cabo Roig. And he did basically everything from, from cleaning the floors, the tables, the kitchen, and uh, he, he worked his way up very nicely and he made a lot of experience on his way. And, um, and it wasn't until 1988 when he, he opened the restaurants Las Villas in, in Campo Amor. And, um, and so it's, uh, it was worked, a lot of sweat went into that, and uh, here it is nowadays with the, with the award. Um, ¿Dónde exactamente está el restaurante para que la gente lo, lo encuentre fácilmente? Bueno, el restaurante de Villa está muy fácil, de, tiene un acceso bastante fácil. Está justo eh, al lado de, de, la, de la Nacional 332, eh, donde es de Campo Amor. Eh, tiene mucha visibilidad, cuando se pasa por enfrente ya se ve, mm. pero eh, por la, lo que es la organización... Hay unos indicadores con restaurantes de las villas que tienen el acceso por atrás mm. con un parque, un parking eh, que tenemos privado, no hay problema de aparcamiento y fácil acceso. Mm. No hay problema. So he's saying to find the restaurant, you're basically coming from, let's say, um, north, or from Torre Vieja or, um, or Yola Costa, you go down Campo Amor, down the dip, 
come up. There's a petrol station on the right-hand side, and the restaurant is right on the opposite side, on the left-hand side. Mm -hmm. It's indicated, plenty of parking, easy to find, very visual, so that's where you can find. Um, how is it w um, working with such a uh, successful person? So what, what, what type of chef is he or, or managing director is he? Well, it, I've learned a lot from, from, from Juanjo in my time at uh, Las Vegas. Uh, the reason I went to Las Vegas was to learn um, typical Mediterranean food and no better than, than, than Juanjo. Mm. Uh, from main courses, from cocidos, uh, migas, uh, to the desserts. I mean, he's a fantastic dessert chef. Um, I've learned a lot from him. Um, it, it, it shows that when the, the public do come, they keep on coming back. The waiters always remember them. They remember their names. They remember what they like. And that's what makes Las Vegas a, 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 so successful. Mm. Um, and due to, obviously, this man here, um, his, his experience is, is second to none. Yeah. Um, I've learned a lot from, the, from, from him himself. That's great. Yeah. Juanjo, um, un galardón así no se recibe solo. Hay un equipo detrás. Y las veces que he ido ahí, que he tenido el gusto de ir, cada vez que entro, parezco que entro en, en, en la cocina, en, en, en el salón de una casa, más que en un restaurante, porque te reciben, te reciben con una sonrisa los, los camareros, todo el mundo está... Parecéis eh, un equipo muy unido. Bueno, la verdad es que, que sí, es así, realmente es así. En lo que he pretendido siempre... Eh, aparte de plantilla, para mí no es plantilla, es una familia, ¿vale? De hecho, bueno, el, el jefe de sala encargado es cuñado mío, mío es el Lalo, eh, está Eugenio, está Antonio, está Pedro, es, son todos, eh, vamos, como una familia, se mira como, como, como familia. Y de hecho, pues este galardón sin ellos es imposible de, de conseguirlo, es gracias a su esfuerzo, bueno, a mi dirección quizás haya puesto algo yo también, ¿no? Pero... Ellos son los que realmente se merecen el galardón por, porque hay gente allí que está conmigo ya 20 y muchos años, ¿no? Eh, es por algo. Eh, mm. Se supone que están como, como yo estoy diciendo, como bien estoy diciendo eh, en familia y, y se sienten a gusto mm. y hacen un buen labor, mm. una buena labor por, por el cliente. Como, como tú bien has dicho, eh, entrar al restaurante de las villas pues es entrar a, a tu casa, ¿vale? Es lo que pretendemos transmitir a a los clientes y amigos que, que van allí. Transmitir eso, eh, darle el servicio en condiciones, darle la mejor calidad, porque realmente eh, en, en la dirección de un restaurante, sí, hay un control de calidad y tal, pero mm, para que funcione, pues al cliente no se le puede engañar. Hay que darle la mejor materia prima, el mejor plato elaborado, eh, intentar de ajustar los precios, porque con lo que nos está cayendo hoy en día, de alguna manera... Hay que ajustarnos un poquito y continuar. Eh, yo soy una persona que, que mi local, pues cada si pasa un poco de tiempo sin ir, pues siempre encuentras algo algo nuevo, algo nuevo de alguna reforma, de algún salón que ha adoptado para para el menú o una barra que ha estado con un ahora últimamente con un aire nuevo porque el cliente me lo me lo exige y yo siempre estoy para y por el cliente porque realmente los que nos dan de comer son los clientes y los amigos. Sin ellos, la verdad es que podríamos ser muy buenos, pero si el cliente no, no nos acompaña, pues el local, el restaurante, el negocio no, no funcionaría. Mm. Just to summarize quickly, Juanjo is saying, and, and well, I actually ask him, uh, award like this, you don't receive as a single person, you receive uh, actually as, as a whole team, and that's what uh, Las Villas restaurant is. It's a um, it's a team. It's 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 more than that. It's actually there's family members um, working in it, and it's and I said every time I went there, um, I was received with a smile um, from the very first moment you go through the door, and um, it's it's a lot of work going in. It's always innovative, um, you know, coming through because you they have very different and, and new things mm -hmm. coming up, and it's um, it's a nice atmosphere. And, and he's, he, he underlines again that it is a team effort, so it is it's very down to to the team, and uh, very very much credit to that. So um, whenever somebody wants to go, he receives not only good food, he receives good quality service. And um, again, thank you very much for being here today. And um, I hope there is another 42 years coming for you, and, and it, it, this won't be the, the only award you will receive. Um, thanks very much again, and um, all the best. Thank you. Thank you.
That was um, this part of the program. And don't go away. Stay with us. We will be back soon with a little bit more of information about the Expo Torrevieja. One of the most interesting stands here on the Expo Torrevieja is the one of Vibes. Um, it's the Women's Association here in the Vega Baja uh, uh, area. And I'm today with Christina. Christina is the president of the association. And I will ask her a few questions about the association. Hello, Christina. Hello. Nice to meet you. No, good. Just tell us a little bit what is Vibes and, and what exactly are you doing? Uh, WIPES is a women's uh, association uh, for entrepreneurs and also for private people coming join. We are selling, promoting each other, but we also have a lot of uh, entertainment. We enjoy being together with each other. We need to have fun. And also, I consider to make business with people, you need to have a trust between us. If we don't have trust, if we don't know each other, it will take much longer time. So we have a network, we are meeting uh, every second week on Wednesday evenings where we talk about the future, what we are going to do, how we are going to do it, like we are planning to have a conference here in May in Torreveja, which I would like to promote later on, of course, but so we have a lot of things ongoing. But it is, it is a women's business organization. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yes, it is. Where can you hear more about it? Where can you learn more about it? Are you? Uh, we have a Facebook group called Wipes, so you can find us there. Uh, and you can also apply to be an uh, associated member in our club, yes. So it doesn't matter what nationality you are? Absolutely not. For, at the moment, we are only Scandinavian people, but we would like to extend to more English-speaking, to the Spanish as well. Also, it's only women, of course, but anyhow, we would like to expand. Okay, well, that's great. So if you are a woman and you want to go into business, if you want to start a business, if you want to continue in business, and you want to join with others um, uh, with, which have the same situation, so you can cho uh, join Vibes. It's uh, W-I-B-E-S, and you look it up on the Facebook. We are at the Norwegian school. We've been to the Norwegian church. Now we are at the Norwegian school. And let's see what the students um, have to say about the Norwegian school here in the Vega Baja area. So w you are all Norwegian, as I understand. So you come from over. How long have you been here? I've been here three years. And what, what, how long do you still have in school? Uh, about a half a year. About another half year, and then you're finished. You're going back to Norway. You will be staying here? Yes, I will be going back to Norway, but uh, probably coming back uh, soon. Okay, good. So what's your favorite subject at school? What exactly are you doing? Oof, uh, maybe mathematics. Mathematics? Yeah. Okay. And what, how long do you, how, do you have another? Are you in the same class, everybody, or, or are you different class? They are the oldest, and I'm uh, a class uh, down there. So how, ma how many years to go? One. One more year, okay. And you're going back to Norway, you're staying here in, in lovely Vega Baja? I'm going back to Norway, yeah. Okay. And what, what's your idea? You, you basically will be finishing by summer then? Yes, um, then I'm going back to university in Norway. Uh, so uh, I hope it's going to go good. 
Okay. And how long have you been here then? I've been here for 12 years actually. Uh, so I came here in second grade, and then I've uh, I've been going here f f in the school for uh, for 12 years. Wow, 12 years, that's a long time. And what about you? Um, how, many, how many years in total can you do at the school that you can do from, from very young to until you reach university age? Uh, from your six years old to 19, you can go at the school. They have uh, everything from uh, the children to us. Okay, and the main language at school is Norwegian or is it Spanish? Norwegian. And you're learning fluent Spanish, I guess, as well? Yeah, we do. So basically you speak Norwegian, English, that's your second language, and it's Spanish on top of that? Yes, yeah. Okay. So do you learn Valenciano as well? Uh, no. Okay. Valenciano is not in it. Okay, so um, Norwegian school, how many students is there at, as a total? I'm not quite sure, but about, uh, in our class, 10. Uh, I'm not sure, I'm quite sure uh, that's all. How many students are the total? I think it's uh, a little bit under 200 students. Okay, 200 Norwegian school, uh, students. Where is the school exactly? It's in Rohales or Quesada. Okay, that's within the Vega Baja. So that's the Norwegian school in, in uh, the Norwegian school in Rojales, in the Vega Baja area. And it's, um, it's, it's a great way to integrate into Spanish society, having 12 years or, or probably even more years down here in Spain. And uh, what do you think about the Vega Baja area? Lovely sunny, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> you will miss it when you're going back to Norway? Definitely. Anyway, I, I, guess, I guess you guys, you will be back sooner than you think. Yeah. Yes, most likely, yeah. Not only summer, is it? <laughs> Okay, thank you very much, guys. Have a lovely time, and um, we will be we will be back soon. And let's see who is next on the list. Here we are at the Norwegian church here in the Vega Baja area and today I'm with Randy and let's see what Randy has to say about what are they doing, where they are exactly and the activities for the members. Where are you exactly Randy? Uh, the Norwegian church in Torrevieja is in uh, La Siesta, uh, right next to, there's another church there. Uh, some people, especially if you have kids, you know about the Flamengo Park, water park, We're right behind that. Uh, so. Uh, it's quite uh, a big church. It was built uh, 12 years ago, and uh, we have uh, we don't have a member list, so we don't know exactly how many people come to our church. But uh, there are several thousand Norwegians in the region, so uh, it's quite busy. It's a, it's a big one. And how often do you meet? And what's the activities exactly? What do you do? We have activities all days of the week. Uh, the church uh, is closed on Mondays, but on Mondays we have groups that go hiking in the mountains. We have bicycle groups, uh, knitting cafes. We have, uh, well, the kitchen is staffed and we have so many volunteers who come in every day to make our famous waffles. Uh, we have different choirs, uh, dance groups, uh, activities for children, young adults. Um, what else do we have? Petanka, uh, there's something every day of the week. So uh, anyone can find something of interest at our church. And, of course, the major part for a church is Sunday service. Every Sunday at 5 o'clock we have a service um, with uh, participation both from local groups and sometimes we have visitors from Norway. Uh, it could be a choir coming down or a band uh, doing a concert. We also have concerts almost every week. Um, oh, that's great. So it's a, it's a very busy schedule. So basically everybody coming down from Norway, from Sweden, or from, from wherever, in, from Northern Europe, um, because it is, I guess, obviously in, in Norwegian language, isn't it? Yeah, the majority of the at activities are in Norwegian. Uh, of course, the Swedes and the Danes uh, find it easy because we understand each other. And But we're open for everybody. We have... Uh, 
Spanish people who come by, Germans, uh, there's quite a big uh, British community in the area and they like our lunches and our Christmas fair. Every November we have a big fair over two days with lots of activities. We sell homemade products. You know, we like our knitting and crocheting, so uh, we have lots of stuff for sale. Okay, if, if somebody wants to get in contact with you, what's the best way of doing it? Is there a website, is there something on, online? We have a website, Schomannskirchen, as you can read, .no. Uh, we're also on Facebook, and we have our programs. So uh, you find all the information you need in the program, uh, links to uh, employees, uh, different groups, uh, contact persons for all the activities. So everything's in this little program here. Okay, thank you very much, Randy, and I'm sure there is many people interested in the in the Norwegian church in La Siesta in Torrevieja and here for the Vega Baja. That was it for today. Um, we heard the legal expert on taxes and fees when selling a property in Spain. We had the award-winning and best restaurant in the Vega Baja area here and we saw the busy um, trade fair Expo Vieja 2017. Next week we will be back with a new episode and we will have new experts on the Palateau and we will be having new interesting topics on the lifestyle here in the Vega Baja area. Thank you and see you next week.